Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and I'm going to try to show you Riemann sums for the area underneath the curve x squared plus 1. First thing I want to do is just show you the idea of Riemann sums. We can take the squares that are made, or the rectangles that are made, by looking at key points on the curve. And so using the key points on the curve for the area, and we're going to look at the region from 0 to 2, x equals 0 to x equal 2. So if we look at this region and we grab x, y points off the curve, you can see that we have a lower approximation to the area underneath the curve. The actual area we're looking at <clears throat> is from here under. So it's this whole area under. And so what we're trying to do is make rectangles to approximate it. If you look at the what we call the lower sum, you can see there are one, two, three rectangles. The lower sum is three rectangles or three units, excuse me, three squares or three units. If we look at the upper sum, if we look at the upper sum, let me try to look, point out the upper sum. The upper sum is looking at these rectangles here. So you have a point on the curve again controlling the height. Again, a point on the curve controlling the height. Actually, it's a little higher right there. What we want to do is look at all of these rectangles now. Okay, well, two big rectangles, but how many square units is what I'm counting. And it seems that our upper sum, just adding them up, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those units. So the actual area underneath the curve has got to be somewhere between our lower approximation, our lower sum, and our upper sum. We're going to try to use summations to break this up and look at what happens if we have if we break up the rectangles into smaller units. I broke them up into units of one, widths of one. We often call that the delta x is equal to one. But what we want to do is try to make the delta x as small as possible. So let's start by just adding up the equation. The equation we're going to use is we're going to say, okay, we need to sum. Let me get a better pen than that one. Hang on, switch that. <coughs> excuse me, the sum, the sum of the areas, the sum of these areas. Well, these are rectangles with a delta x width, a delta x width. If my length creates, a, excuse me, if my interval creates a length of 2, and I break it up by n, if I divide it by n partitions, you can see that each width, each width will end up being 2 over n. The heights, and to get the area of these guys, don't forget, width times height. So the heights are controlled by the locations on the curve. In other words, the y-coordinate. Remember, the y-coordinate there is actually that length. So we're getting the y-coordinates to get the height. So if we sum up, in this case, the first time through, when we were doing the approximations, our width was 1. But if we sum up for unknown widths, the function will look like this. The summation of the width, 2 over n, times the height. And the height is the plug and chug. The plug and chug of each one of the points, starting at 0, then plus the width we are talking about. But since we're going to be using an i to jump through, <clears throat> to increment through, we're going to put a little multiplier of i here. We put a little multiplier of i. Now, to help make sense of this a little bit more, let me just show you what I'm talking about. If, in, if we broke it up into two partitions, if we broke it up into two partitions, then the width would be 1, and that's exactly what we had over here. If we look at i equal 1, if we look at i equal 1, the first increment, then we would be plugging and chugging. We would be plugging and chugging f of, put a 1 here, 2 over 2. So we would be plugging and chugging in the plot of 0 plus 1, because this would be 2 over, remember n is 2, so 2 over 2, because i is 1. So then we're actually multiplying by the exact same width and the exact same plug and chug of the purple, and connecting it to basically the purple rectangles there. So this will calculate for instance, if n is 2, this will calculate the exact same sum that we got right here, 7. 
But what I want to do is create a formula to plug and chug many different ones. Sorry for the interruption there. So let's see if I can do that. What we want to do is use our summation formula, our summation tricks. Okay, and what I'm going to do is plug and chug function first. So let me just rewrite this. The summation, i equal 1 to n. I may not always write the i equal 1 to n. I should. I get a little bit lazy there. I apologize. 2 over n, and let's plug and chug this. This is the function at 2i over n. The 0 obviously will go away, so we don't need to worry about the 0. So I'm really looking at just plugging and chugging 2i over n, 2i over n, into our main function over there, into our main function. So now that, I'm going to use brackets, just in case extra parentheses here, I need the item squared, the x, or the plug, the substitution, the, the evaluation point squared, and then plus 1. That is 2i over n. That didn't come out very clearly. 2i over n squared. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Okay, we've got 2 over n on the outside. That's still our width, still our width. We've got the summation. This is our equal coming down. And now I've got 4i squared over n squared plus 1. Let's go ahead and distribute the 2 over n. I've seen books do different styles, pulling the 2 over n out. I tend to get it all grouped together first. So I'm going to distribute. I'm going to distribute. Now I've got 8i squared over n cubed, n cubed, 8i squared over n cubed, plus 2 over n. And don't forget the rules of summation. We are going to bring that summation over as well. So now I'm looking at summing up both of these items. We're almost done here. Take these summations. Take these summations. Okay. Now look at what we really are focused on. Remember, the i is what's incrementing. So this 8 over n cubed is technically a constant that can be pulled out. So I'm going to pull out the 8 over n cubed. This is where books differ. They pull it out at different times or distribute it at different times. I'm trying to make this as easy as I can for considering how complicated this idea is. What's left is the summation, the summation of the i squared if you pull out the 8 n cubed. Over here, same idea, 2 over n is a constant. Well, what's left? The 1. Remember, there's always a multiplier of 1 there. Almost done. Let's see if I can get some more room here. Okay, the summation, the summation of i squared from our formulas is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all over 6. The summation of 1, if we go up to n, don't forget we're going up to n, is going to be 1 times that value. Remember that rule? Don't forget this rule. The summation of a constant going up to n is going to be c times n. So I'm using that rule right now. So we've got 2 over n multiplied, and then that is times n times 1, or n. Let's clean some stuff up over here. The n's cancel there. The n's cancel there. We're clearly going to get a plus 2 at the end, and that's very important as part of our answer. Now, this part inside, this part inside, I've learned to just multiply all that out. And when you multiply that out, you would foil it, distribute it in. You're going to get 2n cubed, 2n cubed. Okay, middle term will be 2n plus another n is 3n times an n is 3n squared. Okay, and then on the last one is plus 1, so plus n. So now what I'm going to do is take this these two fractions and basically combine them so we can see this a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the 8 all the way across. Well, hang on a second. Always see cancellation where you can, right? Always see cancellation where you can. So I'm going to take the 8 and the 6 and reduce that. If you take the 2's out, that leaves a 3 and a 4. All right, it's a little bit messy, but let's see what we got. If I distribute the 4 across, I'm going to get 8n cubed. What's down on the bottom is the n cubed and the 3. I'm going to start breaking these up. This is 3n cubed. So this is breaking them up. I'm going to break the 3 terms up from that trinomial in the numerator. I'm going to break them up into 3 different fractions. The middle term is 4 times 3, 4 times 3. 12n squared, 12n squared, but this is still over the same 3n cubed, 3n cubed. One more, 
last term there is going to be 4 times 4n over okay, 3n cubed. 3n cubed. So this is giving us an equation based on the number of n's. Remember, the number of n's is the partitions. The partitions. How many, how many rectangles we're making here as we look at a curve? We're looking at how many rectangles we're making. So keep that in mind. A little bit of cleaning up here. Obviously, that cancels. 8 thirds. Let's bring the 2 over. So we're going to be adding those two values. <clears throat> These two characters over here, I'm going to write out, but if n goes to infinity, you're going to see the limit on these guys go to zero. So technically, I have a 4 over n. You can see things cancel there, okay, and leave a 4. Over here, n's cancel. It looks like I've got a 4 over 3n squared. So this is part of the answer that we often look for. I'm going to clean this up one little bit more. 8 thirds is 2 and a third, so we really have 4 and a third plus Whoops, four, four, let me erase that, I messed, man, made a little bit of a mistake there. So four over n plus four over three n squared. So this is an answer we're often looking for. You can plug and chug a one in here, and you're now going to get, um, what, what you have is you're going to get a, a pretty close example of the answers that we were getting above. Okay, if n goes to zero, excuse me, if n goes to infinity, if n goes to infinity, these guys go to zero. What's left? Four and a third. Four and a third. And if you come back up to the graph, if you come back up to the graph, four and a third is definitely right in between, it's not dead center, but in between our estimates, which gives us, if n is infinity, if we make infinite little rectangles, we should get the exact area in the curve, and that looks to be four and one third. I'm David from Electric Teaching. Thank you.